I think after this episode, I'll go to the behind the scenes blog and post something about the new character. Yep, there's a new character in town. Or at least in this episode. So if you want to join me and share your thoughts, come to the lesbian romantic behind the scenes blog. How to get there? Sign up for the newsletter. Go to lesbianromantic.com slash newsletter. Welcome to the Lesbian Romantic Podcast. This is The Diva Story, Part 10. Hi, hey, so glad you could make it. Come in, come in. Thank you so much. <laughs> make yourself at home. Oh, there? Yeah, the couch is fine. Okay. So, a glass of wine, Millie? And before you say no, one won't hurt. We don't have to work tomorrow. You have to stay sane and relax now and then. Millie rubbed her throat nervously. Um, I just never, almost never. Suzanne walked over and smiled, running her long, elegant fingers through her hair. She sat down on the couch next to Millie. Millie swallowed hard. I've been in this business a bit longer than you, and please let me tell you one thing. You need evenings like this. Nothing too crazy. Just a glass of wine with a friend. Relax for a while, you know. Millie smiled back nervously. Uh, sure. Okay. Suzanne slapped her knees and got back up. Brilliant. Let me go open a bottle. Make yourself at home, okay? Millie watched Suzanne disappear through a door on her right. Suzanne looked stunning. She always did. Even now, while she was wearing a blue polo, low-cut jeans and walking around on her bare feet. Oh God, I can't believe I'm here, Millie thought. She glanced around the room. This was a beautiful apartment. The spacious living room was decorated with Scandinavian furniture. It was stylish and comfortable. The rent for this place must be through the roof. Millie thought. But it wasn't like she had anything to complain about. She had been pleasantly surprised by her living arrangements in Houston. The rent was almost half of what she paid in New York. And yet the apartment here was twice the size. Millie turned around to look through the floor-to-ceiling window behind her. Houston's skyline looked amazing from here. I picked my favorite burgundy. That okay for you? Suzanne asked, still in the kitchen. Yes, of course. Millie stared down at her hands. They were shaking a bit. She was feeling overwhelmed, to be honest. Suzanne had invited her after they had practiced together for most of the day. Rehearsals of the production were going pretty smoothly, considering Millie didn't have that much experience compared to the rest of the cast. The director didn't like to distract from the music too much, he had explained, and so Millie didn't have to jump through hoops or remember complicated moves while she was singing. But it was still very hard and very scary. Every morning... Millie woke up nervous and anxious to go to work. Would this be the day she disappointed the director and the rest of the staff? Luckily, she seemed to have a magic switch once she arrived at the Wortham Theater. All of Millie's nerves would be gone by the time she had locked her rental and was walking to the artist's entrance. But when Suzanne, 
the American soprano singing the prestigious role of the countess, had invited Millie to come by her place after work. Millie's stomach had started churning. Suzanne was not just any singer. She had already gathered a lot of fame for her performances as the countess in Mozart's La Nozze di Figo. She basically traveled around the world to sing the role in prestigious opera houses everywhere. Why on earth would she want to invite a first-time mezzo, who got this role just because someone else had had bad luck, to come over for a drink? Sure, they got along well. Everyone did, really. Millie was surprised how civil and positive everyone was. The director was great at keeping his cast's egos in check. Here we go. Suzanne interrupted Millie's thoughts. She was suddenly standing next to the couch and was holding two large wine glasses. Millie moved to the edge of her seat to accept the glass. Thank you. You're welcome. Suzanne sat down on the couch next to Millie again. Millie looked up to see two beautiful grayish-blue eyes focused on her. She smiled nervously. Suzanne was sitting so close, Millie could see her eyelashes were a bit darker than the long blonde hair in a loose ponytail. So, Millie couldn't help lowering her gaze and studying Suzanne's full lips. But she quickly caught herself and looked back up. What do you think of our production so far? Suzanne raised her glass and took a slow sip of the wine. One of her eyebrows was raised questioningly. Millie stretched her legs. Oh, I really like it. It's very pure. Without being too old school. Suzanne nodded. I agree. Not musically, though. Stefan likes his Mozart tidy. <laughs> Millie chuckled. Stefan, the conductor, did not believe in a liberal interpretation of the musical score. Quite the opposite. Yes, very tidy. Suzanne motioned at the glass of wine in Millie's hand. Try it. I think you'll like it. Millie looked down. Oh, right. She raised her drink, suddenly feeling very self-conscious. She sniffed the wine and tried to take in its aroma before she sipped. Oh, it's very rich. Yes, it is. Millie studied the warm red color under her nose so she wouldn't have to look at Suzanne. In the back of her mind, a tiny voice was whispering, What is this? It's almost like... Again, her thoughts were interrupted by Suzanne. You have an apartment in New York City? Millie did look up now. Yeah, in Harlem. I remember when I was just getting started, I had my fair share of crappy apartments. Millie's brow shot up. Suzanne waved her hand. Don't get me wrong, I love Harlem. Millie shrugged. Harlem is nice. My apartment is not. You're right. I know. Those first years are hard. Suzanne raised her glass. But it'll get better soon. You will be just fine, Millie. Millie felt her shoulders relax a bit. Suzanne wasn't stuck up at all. Despite her fame and experience, she knew what Millie sacrificed every day. Thanks. That means a lot. Suzanne took another sip from her glass. You seem very comfortable singing, Carabino. Millie smiled. I am. 
It's the first time I sing the role in a big production, but I've always had a fondness for the character and the music. Suzanne nodded. That's what makes the difference, doesn't it? When you feel like you know the character, Millie agreed enthusiastically. Yes, it makes everything feel so much more natural. Well, you sound very natural. You have a beautiful instrument, and you're already so confident for your age. Millie's cheeks turned red. Not exactly a sign of confidence, she thought before she said, "Thank you." Suzanne shook her head. That wasn't a compliment; it was a fact. Her eyes focused on Millie's glass again. Millie quickly raised it and took another sip of the delicious wine. Are you always this nervous when off stage, Millie? Because that might get you in trouble. There's a lot of egos out there. Millie looked up at Suzanne in surprise. No, no, I'm, I'm not. Sorry, I guess I'm just tired. Suzanne put her hand on Millie's bare arm. Millie's skin tangled. I'm just teasing you, Millie. I understand this is all a bit strange. No, no, not at all. Your hand is on my arm. You're one of the lead singers, and I'm in your apartment. This is strange, Millie thought. Suzanne crossed her legs lazily. Anyone special coming to the premiere? Millie frowned. She had a feeling my parents wasn't the answer Suzanne was looking for. No, not really. She briefly wondered if someone from the Met or the Foundation would attend. Probably not. Suzanne now leaned a bit closer, much to Millie's surprise. Not seeing anyone then. Millie felt a muscle in the corner of her eye twitch. No, I don't have time to see anyone. She didn't dare turn and face Suzanne. It's hard, all right. Not many people understand this lifestyle. Most of us end up with someone in the business. I sure did a couple of times. Millie finally did turn to look at Suzanne. She was curious now. You did, you do. She knew lots of singers dated other singers. Those relationships were often wild, and a bit crazy. It wasn't easy to have a normal life together when you both travel around the world almost nonstop. Millie had heard stories of opera stars hopping on private planes to spend just one day with their lover. It wasn't healthy, or helpful. It could never be worth the risk of getting tired or sick. Millie thought, but she still enjoyed the stories. It was almost like opera artists liked to live out the crazy stories they portrayed on stage. Lots of wild and passionate romances, so much drama and deceit. There was always plenty of gossip. Most of it was probably true. Millie's nose picked up a whiff of Suzanne's perfume. It was sweet and even a bit sensual. Suzanne hadn't answered Millie's question yet. But now spoke again. Oh yes, I've had my share of secret romances. Millie's eyes locked with Suzanne's. Oh, this was just too much. She shouldn't ask. 
She shouldn't ask. She shouldn't secret? Why secret? Millie saw the spark of amusement in the pair of blue eyes locked with her own. Oh, I walked straight into that, she thought. Suzanne's lips curved up into a satisfied smile. Well, you know, in our world, things are very, like you say, old school, in a way. Millie tilted her head. What do you mean? There's tons of affairs and divorces and... Suzanne shook her head. No, I mean dating a woman isn't exactly something you do openly. Millie's eyes widened. Her throat was suddenly oh so dry. Oh, yes. Yes, I guess that's true. I'm okay with being open about it. It's usually the other woman wanting to protect her career. Suzanne's fingertip was now drawing little circles on Millie's skin. Millie's heart was hammering. She had goosebumps all over her body. What do you think? Would you ever openly date a woman? Millie stopped breathing. Her cheeks went from warm to on fire in about half a second. Excuse me? Suzanne's fingertip stopped moving. Their eyes locked again. Millie almost couldn't take it. Oh, I guess I assumed you... I'm sorry. Millie's nostrils flared. She was tempted to lash out, tell Suzanne that yes, she had assumed a hell of a lot, and that she was wrong. But Millie would be lying. No, it's okay. She said it as calmly as possible. You assumed correctly. Suzanne smiled kindly. Sorry, I shouldn't have been so bold about it. I've clearly made you uncomfortable. She moved away from Millie a bit. Millie forced herself to smile. It's fine. She stared at the coffee table. Look, I'm sorry, but I think I better go. I'm not feeling all that well, and I don't want to get sick. Suzanne's eyes narrowed. But then, her expression softened. Okay, of course. Millie put the glass of wine on the coffee table. Thank you for the wine. It really was delicious. Anytime. Millie got up. Hesitantly, she hated how uncomfortable this felt. Look, Suzanne, I'm sorry. I hope we can... It's okay, Millie. We're okay. <laughs> Millie sighed in relief. Okay, thank you. And thank you for inviting me. You're always welcome here. Suzanne sounded so sincere. It made Millie feel worse. Was she overreacting? She took a step towards the front door. I guess I'll see you the day after tomorrow, then. Yes, can't wait. Millie looked back in surprise. Suzanne smiled. I mean, our first rehearsal in the theater hall. Millie quickly nodded. Yes, yes, looking forward to that too. Suzanne put away her glass and got up. Let me walk you to your car.
Millie switched off the engine in front of her apartment building hours later. She had gotten lost on her way back, and while she was trying to find her way, she had decided driving around was actually exactly what she needed. Traffic wasn't as hectic as in New York City, and she had needed to think. She had followed whatever highway or road she came across, with Houston's skyline in her rearview mirror. You could easily escape the downtown area here. God, what just happened? She had never met another female singer who was gay. Well, not as far as she knew. Suzanne sure had no problem telling her, even though they barely knew each other. But why? What had made Suzanne think she could or should tell Millie? Had Millie sent her the wrong signals? That question had bothered Millie the most. What had she done during those rehearsals to give Suzanne the idea? She was really hitting on me. Whatever she had done, she had done it unconsciously. And that scared the shit out of Millie. She was a professional. Suzanne's question also kept running through her mind. Would you ever Would openly, you date, ever a woman? openly date a woman? It was a question Millie had always avoided answering. She had just decided a relationship would never be compatible with her work. Why get tripped up over a hypothetical? No. Besides, she had worked so hard. Why would she ever risk all of that for some bound-to-be short-lived romance? It simply wasn't worth it. Millie was upset and annoyed with herself. God damn it. She kept letting herself get distracted. She had been so relieved when the rehearsals in Houston had finally taken her mind of Hannah Emsworth. Yeah, right. Mostly, anyway. She had hoped to hear from Hannah after getting the role in Houston. But she hadn't heard a thing. Sure, there had been an email from Charlotte to congratulate her. But that wasn't the same. Not even. Millie had been way too focused on Hannah, she now saw. She blamed Christine, really. It's her, fault. her vocal coach had gotten her all riled up and had forced her own obsession with Hannah onto Millie. Why? She would talk to Christine about it when she got back to New York City. I'm gonna tell her. From now on, Millie would focus back on building a career, becoming a better singer, and learning from the best. For herself, and for her own future. Yes, for Not for some rich patron, or for the whole darn opera world. But now she had somehow gotten herself into another confusing situation. Was she trying to sabotage herself for something? She had gone from one mess to the next. Get it together. Focus. Focus. Millie walked up the stairs, two at a time, suddenly wanting nothing else than this day to be over. She would take a hot shower and go straight to bed, maybe even sleep in tomorrow morning. God, she so hoped everything would be back to normal the day after tomorrow. Suzanne was a professional. She would treat Millie in the same way she had before, right? Millie started looking in her bag for her apartment key. Only after she found it, and when she was about to open her door, she spotted the large bouquet of flowers. Huh? What the? It was beautiful. Large, old white roses were mixed with other white flowers 
she didn't know the name of. It was not a bouquet you picked up at just any florist. It really was breathtakingly beautiful. Millie's admiration quickly turned into a sinking feeling in her stomach. Oh no. Had Suzanne sent her these? What on earth would Millie do then? It was a sweet gesture, and Suzanne had arranged it so quickly. On the other hand, it was kind of pushy too, no? Millie had practically bolted from Suzanne's apartment tonight. Clearly, that was a sign Millie was not open to this type of conversation or relationship. And sending this stunning bouquet was not exactly giving Millie the space she needed. Millie picked up the flowers. A card was attached to one of the roses. She was afraid to read what was written inside. What if Suzanne pushed this too far? What if she had written something that would make working together a lot harder? Or impossible? Millie closed her eyes briefly, took in a deep breath, and then flipped the card open with her finger. She started reading. Oh, Millie, 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 what are you doing? What are you up to? This was part 10 of The Diva Story. This podcast is supported by the generosity of its listeners. If you like my work, please go to lesbianromantic.com slash coffee and consider buying me a coffee. Every contribution helps. Thank you so much for listening, and I will see you next week. Hannah better get her act together next week. Damn it.